I'm gonna share with you a beautiful recipe for the most amazing pavlova. This is a gorgeous dessert that you can make your own. I'm gonna call this pavlova royale. And I think King Charles will absolutely love it. So we're gonna start off by making two beautiful meringues, one slightly bigger than the other. I'm gonna shape this lovely pavlova almost like a kind of crown, an edible crown, can you imagine it? It's gonna be amazing. So up with a machine. You can do it with a whisk and a bowl by hand. Uh, and if you want a little workout, happy days. I'm gonna use a machine because it's nice and efficient. We're gonna take six free range eggs. If you can get some slightly older eggs, look at the dates, uh, that actually will benefit you in making a better meringue that is really big, fluffy, airy and delicate. And there's something about the albumum which gets kind of stiffer when the eggs are slightly older. So a little tap on the egg, crack it open and just cradle that egg yolk from one side to the other. You don't want any egg yolk in there at all. What to do with the yolks? You could make lovely custard. Uh, even more fun, make a lovely carbonara. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, or you could make homemade lemon curd, really, really nice. So egg yolks, um, just cover those, put them in the fridge and they will not go to waste. So that is very nice. Egg whites there, a uh, pinch of salt goes in. So let that go and let that whisk up. So, you can see that it's quadrupled in size. It's got nice and stiff. Then I've got 300 grams of white sugar. And just slowly add it in, spoon by spoon. It will start beating the sugar into the stiff egg whites. And let this go for about three or four minutes. Get a little spatula, go around the edges, just to kind of mop up any of that sugar that might be stuck around the edges. It feels nice, but we're gonna check it. So just get a little bit of meringue between your fingers and just rub them together. If you can feel any kind of sugary sort of abrasion, then just carry on whisking it. You want it to be super, super smooth, which this isn't quite. So about three minutes in total, I reckon. So here, I've got two trays. Um, and two bits of baking paper or greaseproof paper. That little bit of mess on the end of that spatula, just put a little bit on the corner like this, and it's just enough to stick down the paper. When you put this into the oven, often they're fan assisted, and it's just kind of blowing all over the place, and it's sort of annoying. So let's turn that off like that, have a little feel. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna do four little bits of meringue in there. And then divide your meringue into the center of the greaseproof paper. You wanna make one slightly smaller than the other. So this one will be slightly bigger. So now just take a little bit of time just to move this around into a round. I quite like the idea of kind of going into a bit of a crown-like shape, because this is for the coronation. Once you've got that, then I'm gonna try and just pull up little lips like this, almost like little crowny like wisps. And if we're lucky, that will stay as it is and it will look really regal and royal. Just tap this one down and this is gonna go on top. Gorgeous. Okay, so all done. We are ready and raring to go. So I've got the oven at 130 degrees Celsius, which is 250 Fahrenheit, okay? So that's low. Close this, it's on fan oven, it's on convection, 130. And I'll do that for about an hour and a half, and then I'll switch the oven off and let it slowly cool down for about an hour in the residual heat, and that'll be amazing. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make the fillings, and it comes in a few little parts. So the meringues are cooked and cooled down. I'll show you those in a little bit. But let's just take a little moment to think about what makes a beautiful filling for a pavlova. So one of the classics, is sweetened cream with vanilla, and that's called creme chantilly. Creme chantilly is vanilla sweetened cream. This is double cream. So you want or you have to have it double or whipping cream, which has a slightly higher fat content, which will allow the whisking to trap the air inside the cream. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of sugar, a tablespoon or two. Keep whisking it. Another thing that you would do classically is just scrape out a fresh vanilla pod, 
which I haven't got today, but you can get vanilla paste. So one, two, or even three teaspoons of this beautiful paste. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. So if you do a little figure of eight, that gives you the most amount of movement. It kind of really churns it all up uh, and really traps the air into it. A few more. Nearly there. A few more, that's it. Right, stop there. Okay, I'm really happy with that. It will get a tiny bit thicker. Now a little twist, completely not classic at all, is to put about 300 grams of lovely Greek yogurt. Okay, what does that give? A similar texture, it gives more flavor, but also that flavor, that tang with the raspberry and the little toasted almonds is so, so, so good. So just do a little figure of eight, fold that in, look at that. The yogurt also helps stabilize that lovely texture and stops the cream from splitting. Then we've got some raspberries here. I'm gonna take half and they're gonna have a little bath with some pims, 200 milliliters. It's gently alcoholic, it's not too alcoholic. And these raspberries will soak up that flavor. You can even squash them a little bit if you want. And you can see the texture already changing, getting softer as that alcohol kind of penetrates. Pims raspberries, fresh raspberries, Toasted almonds, just lightly toasted in the oven. Then we got some beautiful lemon curd, look at that. So let's get these beautiful meringues out of the oven. So here's the bottom one, look at that. It's cool, beautiful. Now letting these meringues cool down in the residual heat of the oven just kind of gets rid of any residual moisture. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cream and pop this on the base. Why? because I don't want to be like carrying it all around. And then the pavlova ends up on the floor. And that's how uh, Eaton Mess was created. We take this beautiful meringue. Then we're gonna get our cream and put half of it in the middle and around like that. So just use the tip of the spoon just to kind of move that around. Just have a few little blobs here and there of that lovely vanilla. We're gonna go in with our raspberries. So the flavor of the raspberries in the middle will be different to the ones on top. Then we're gonna go in with a little handful of your almonds and then my favorite bit, the beautiful lemon curd. The more scruffy you do this, the better. Then we go for our little delicate crown that sits on top like that. And then the remaining cream, look at that. Look at that, beautiful. Now what I love about this recipe is you can take the cream whipped in one little tub. You can have the marinated raspberries, the fresh raspberries, all these little parts you can take individually. And then wherever you're going, whether it's a street party, a barbecue, someone else's house, whatever, you can make it there on site. So one jar fully utilized. And then I'll take most of these raspberries and literally just dunk it on the top like that. At this point, just a few almonds around the top, not too many. If you get some white chocolate, just grab it towards you like this. You make these lovely little shavings. You don't need much at all, just a little tapping. If you were nicking someone's chocolate, they wouldn't even notice. Look, no one, no one will ever know. And then last but not least, just a few bits of mint in and around. Pops of color, smells joyful. If I had one last thing, that I could do that just makes it even fresher. Lemon zest on a little fine grater. It's eccentric, it's beautiful, it's bonkers. Come on, look at that. That is a very beautiful pavlova royale. So I really want to attack it. Oh, hello. So quality control, taste. Mmm. I'm not even crunching, I'm like closing my mouth. And the meringue is just like snapping and then just exploding. It's chewy and it's light and it's delicate and thin. An absolute treat, an absolute joy. So there you go guys, Pavlova Royale. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you found this recipe really useful. Have a wonderful coronation. And if it's been and gone, then have a wonderful day no matter what. But that is a nice little recipe for a nice moment in time. Happy days.